Put your hands where I can see them. What the fuck is this? Hello there everyone, I'm Big Bear. Welcome back to Disco Elysium. We need to go down to the coast to speak to people in the fishing village to see if they know where Ruby is. So that is, uh, I guess, something to do today. We've got less than an hour, well, we're coming up for an hour and 15 before I can go and get my gun. I've still not made a decision on whether I want to go myself or take him with me. Leaning towards taking Kim because he is a gun himself. Probably a good idea, but I don't know. I'll make a decision very shortly. Um, time is dragging on, though, and on top of that, there were a few other things that I wanted to do. Um, I think we need to speak to this chappy again about... I can't remember what it was that we need to speak to him about. Ah, uh, what was it? Hi again, Gendarme. What is this, Composure? What is it about the way he carries? Oh, I forgot about that one. Composure. Okay, 42. I suppose I could try that check. Uh, tell me about that muscular type who came to investigate the crime. I need to talk to you with your Sunday friend. Oh, yeah, that was about committee business. What? There was something. Oh, a committee. How interesting. I, I honestly cannot remember what the terminology was and for if it. if I may ask, Gendarme, what is this committee about? He takes a measure drag of a cigarette. He's all bemused skepticism. He doesn't actually care what you want with his friend. That was it. It was about la responsabilité. Um, I'm guessing there's a thought process coming if we speak to him about it. Maybe? I don't know. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm just trying to reach a higher authority. It's about assigning la responsabilité. God, of course it is. My friend is always trying to convince me I need a little more responsibility. As though I don't have enough going on already. In any case, I would love to help. But the thing is, I don't know where he is. We don't talk about everything, you see. He gently taps the end of his cigarette with his forefinger. He might have mentioned something about making a tour of some historical sites up the coast. In an unofficial capacity, of course. Uh, do you want me to help me back? I guess I'll have to look for him along the coast. I guess you will. Okay, uh, that was it. That lad responsibility. I can't remember where I got that from and why it was in uh, my list of to-do things, but eh, what the hell. I just remembered I needed to speak to the smoker on the balcony. Uh, what else have we got? Let me just quickly see if there's anything I can put into composure, uh, and then we'll crack on. Bye-bye, Gendarme. Okay, we, we got one Bye more in composure. 58. Could he be a member of the homosexual underground? Why? Just pointing it out. We're not talking about some kind of cult with members here. You made it up. Why? Why? I didn't realize we were going to ask him about his sexuality. Um, are you part of the homosexual underground? Uh, I'm not bringing it up. Let's go. Uh, what the hell? The homosexual underground? I don't even know what that's supposed to be. Uh, the smoker sits up immediately, his eyes wide with amused surprise. <laughs> A honeyed smile lingers on his lips. Why, yes, I am, officer. Why? Do you want to investigate? Uh-oh. Okay. Uh, yes, I want to hear more about this homosexual underground you're part of. No, I just want to know whether you were one of them. Uh, I'm, I'm good, I think. Uh, ah, what the hell? Tell me more about it, I guess. Oh, it's a pleasure group. A sabrosa pleasure group congregating in cellars under the cover of night. Cellars? Saturday night. Sometimes even Friday night. <laughs> what about Thursday night? But why do you convene? What do you do? I... Okay, uh, what about Thursdays? Or Thursday night. Sometimes the congregating doesn't even end. It carries on into our daily life. Interesting, he lowers his voice conspiratorially and looks around. Uh, but why do you convene? What do you do? Oh, we're ambitious. We want to destroy the last vestiges of meaning. The last things people in Rebishol have to hold on to. The true symbols of security. The meaning of man and woman, mother and father. Their marriage. Well, everybody's got to have a hobby, I guess. Um, destroy the last vestiges of meaning. Um. Everything will be constantly shifting and moving under our rule. The future will belong to a circus of identities just spinning around, surreal and unreal. You won't even know who you are anymore. I didn't think we were going to get this philosophical this early into this episode, but uh, what the hell, I'll go with it. Uh, but I like knowing who I am. Does it have anything to do with disco? Nah, but I like knowing who I am. But do you also like the razzle-dazzle of gold? Do you like parties and discos and having fun under the vibrant lights of Saturday night? Because instead of the traditional family unit, we're going to have all this razzmatazz. And mysteries, of course, too. 
mysteries of sexual nature, very esoteric, and disco music and drugs. Seems like fun. Because instead of the traditional family unit, we're going to have all this razzmatazz and mysteries, of course, too. Mysteries of sexual nature, very esoteric, and disco music and drugs. Razzmatazz. I do like disco. Maybe I should get into it. Uh, no, this is not me. That much fun should be illegal. <laughs> ah, but for the better part of history, it has been illegal. But it hasn't anymore? No. He studies you from across the table. Across the table? I'm not sitting at the table. What if I can't remember whether I, I'm in or not? What if I can't remember anything about my life, aside from the fact that I like disco? Uh, okay, then I'm definitely not in. Um, well, what if I can't remember? Well, you never know. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's exactly what we're looking for. Who knows? Maybe you were homosexual in the past. Maybe all of that has been repressed. Well, I mean, Harry does have amnesia. I can't assume, can I? I have to say that you do look like someone who might be part of the underground. You have that very distinctive, I can't understand what's going on here, look. This is going to be like a 20 hour mind project for me, 20 hours at least. I, yeah, I mean, we've got time. I don't think this series is going to end anytime soon, so. Absolutely wonderful. There we go. A man like you can figure out his sexuality in a working day. It won't be 20 hours unless you want to enter the heightened realms of the Phantasm Erotique afterwards. It may be 20 hours or more, but that would be on your own time. Please tell me it's not a 20-hour think tank. What are you doing here? Tell me about the muscular type who came to investigate the crime. Uh... Oh yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building, asking questions. Have we not already asked him these questions? Oh no, we didn't get a chance to speak to him because we had to speak to his friend and he left. I'm an idiot, of course. Uh, and then we'll have a wee look into what that thought process was. Uh, what, did you what did you tell him? Nothing. That I didn't see anything. And he believed you? Why shouldn't he? Did you tell him about your friend? What friend? Your Sunday friend, the witness. No, I don't think it came up. Uh, what did he look like? Muscular, handsome, strong, like one of those military types. Uh, was he alone? Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. Earpiece? Yes, you know those tiny speaker microphones that fancy security guards sometimes wear. And what was he saying? Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. Besides muscular, did he have any other identifying traits? Oh, uh, let me think. He had an accent. He sounded like one of those mercenaries. He sounded vaguely Oranese. No, not vaguely, scratch that. He sounded definitely Oranese. And that would be helpful if I knew what Oranese sounded like. Uh, okay, thanks for the information. Sure. Anything else on your mind? What are you doing here? Why would I ask him? Admiring the atmosphere. What about you, officer? Well, I don't live here anymore. Uh, this is where I'm going to go down in history. I'm going to sing karaoke. Really? Well, I look forward to that. It raises a glass to you. Okay. Bye, -bye gendarme. Anyway, that'll do. Um, what was the thought process that we were looking at there? Uh, Homosexual underground. Uh, you see mysterious strangers in the night, leaning against unlit doorways, engaged in hushed conversations. A shadowy cabal exchanges looks, whispers in dark alleys and unmarked locales. A radical, uh, oh sorry, a radical cell conspiring against the state and perhaps even against man and woman. Was that a secret handshake? What's going on? Who? Come on. Who are these secretive people? How will they accomplish their sinister and world-altering goals? And most importantly, are you one of them? You could be. Maybe you forgot. Uh, research time. Oh no, eight hours. That's not too bad. Um, yeah, I mean, I get... Uh, it's not a priority at the moment because I'm more interested in Fairweather T500. What else have I got? I've still not done Wasteland or Reality. But I, I, I don't know why. I think I'm just worrying too much about the physical instrument. I don't know. It's something to consider. I've also got... What else have I got? Actual art degree, kingdom of conscience, indirect modes of taxation, regular law, lo law official. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, okay. It doesn't matter because we're still working on the fair weather. But anyway, I'll come back to that one. Um, also, on top of that, given the fact I'm 20 points away from another skill point, I've decided to put and use some skill points. 
it was something that I was considering doing at the end of the last episode and time got away from me. But that being said, I'm going to keep two or three points, I guess. So we've got, what, five to play with. Another one's going to come up, but there were a few things I really wanted to put into. I guess one of the things that I like most uh, in the game is, where is it now? Uh, I think it was, was it an intellect? No, it wasn't intellect. Uh, Hand-eye coordination, savoir faire, da 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 da. Visual calculus, yeah, because I just, I love that component about it, especially like when we were looking at the trajectory of the bullet and all that kind of stuff and the way that, you know, we were looking at footprints and uh, tire tracks and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to throw one in to visual calculus. Um, what else was I looking at? Reaction speed, the quickest to react an untouchable man. I kind of wanted to throw one in there. Hand-eye coordination is pretty good. Ready, aim, fire. If I get my gun back, should be quite handy. Um... Composure, what was straight in your back, keep your poker face. I know, I'm tempted to put in Esprit, esprit de Corps, Connection to Station 41, Understand Cop Culture, and I guess we'll put one more. I, I You know, if I don't use them, they're just going to keep piling up on me, and, you know, I can do the same kind of thing, build up and then, and then take it from there. What was Encyclopedia again? Call upon all your knowledge, produce fascinating trivia, conceptualize it, understand creativity, the art, drama, oh, I don't know. Pain threshold, shrug off the pain, they'll have to hurt you more. Sounds useful. That being said, I'm trying to, I, I, I'm not, still not entirely sure if... I mean, why is pain threshold so high in comparison? I don't know. Anyway, but let's go with it. And there we go. Next up, ask about Ruby in the village. Um, it was looking pretty good. Okay, and then there was a couple of other things. So once I've finished this thought process, then that uh, means I can go back and finish off the conversation I was having in the church. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, let's go down the coast and see if we can find out Ruby where Ruby is. Oh. You think you have a pretty hot suspect right now, don't you? That ruby of yours? Yeah, we were just talking about her. Yes, we do. Uh, yeah, and? I don't need this criticism right now. This chapter is closed. Yes, and? Notice how it came together without casting too much suspicion on Classia. It was nice and ruby-centric in the end. What do you mean? Uh, I, I'm not entirely sure I want to listen to my volition at this point. What do you mean? Anything strike you a bit off about this mishmash? I know, the whole fucking thing, I guess. Uh, well, the bullet didn't have to come from the roof. It could have come from anywhere on the coast. I, I'm, I'm fairly certain she shot them through the window. Uh, the footprints in the pinball workshop didn't fit with the odd sole prints on the crime scene. Mm. So far, no one has mentioned hearing the shot. Mm. Footprints. No, they didn't. Okay, the bullet could have come from the coast. Absolutely. It could have come from anywhere. But you're suddenly so certain it came from the roof behind the window. No, I'm not. I just, I can't seem to find the, the, the segment or area where I can look for residue on the pier. Um, that being said, I have no idea how to get to the islands either. Uh, that reminds me, I need to go back and speak to, what's her name? Is it Joyce? I think her name's Joyce on the boat. I might go and do that now, actually, before we go and speak about Ruby, just to see if, because she has a boat. Maybe we, she would take us up the coast. But then my first thought was the lassie in the fishing village. I don't know. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go and speak to Joyce in a second. So far, no one has mentioned hearing the shot. Notice how this hasn't come up at all. Even Hardy and his boys didn't mention it. Neither did you. Uh, it's a good point, I guess. I didn't mention that. I'm done thinking about this. Finish the thought. That's right. Finish thought. Just finish it and conveniently go on. She's watching you leave right now. You know that. Free as a bird on that roof, lighting up a cigarette and thinking, am I glad Ruby's in this shit and not me? Don't listen to this guy. The theory was solid. He's just jealous. Move on. It's no use harassing her further. Well, I've got volition and logic. Are they saying I should go back and speak to class here? Maybe. Okay, let's go and have a quick word with Joyce. Um, just to be on the safe side. If there's anything interesting, I'll keep it in. Uh, went to the village on the coast officer. See you there. Oh, 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 
Uh, okay, hang on a wee minute. Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. I decided to just quickly click on this wall because I know it was something I tried in one of the very first episodes, and conceptualization is now up to 42. Plus two in the dim light, something... Some things become clearer. Plus one, you have a keen aesthetic sensibility. Plus two, Cindy's artistic impulses are infectious. 42... Conceptualization, hang on. Okay, jacket back just on. An ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. Yeah. Oh! Why? It's a wall. An ordinary wall. Why must we stop to look at this wall every time we pass by? <laughs> we have business to attend to. <laughs> Sorry, Kim. Okay, fair enough. You know, I'm not going to throw anything in conceptualization at this point, but uh, okay, it's good to know that that's something we can potentially do. Um, right, down the coast. Right. Uh... Ooh! Joyce! I'll just keep the Cordelechi in the channel, if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. Hi, ma'am. And it's a jetty, by the way. Of course. Jetty. I prefer a good jetty to a pier any day. Jet, jet, jetty. Hello, ma'am. Hello, detectives. She fastens the end of the line around the post and straightens her back. It's good to see you here. I only just arrived myself. What brings you here, madame? I'm excited. Uh, I think we're going to get use of a boat. Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this jetty for weeks now, so I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. That. And she's also keeping an eye on you. Uh, have you been spying on us? Spying has such a negative connotation. I did track your progress along the coast, however, and decided I would be better able to assist you from here. Then there's the matter of that little scamp in old lady clothes. She threatened to paint the cordelate she read. Like blood, you see. Well, I like it the way it is. White. So how do you like it here? Look around. Mm. How do I like it? She casts her gaze towards the village, slush melting on the cinder blocks. Construction work left half finished ten years ago. Water drips down eaves of Eternite. The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune. The smell of salt and dog shit in the background. It's pornographically poor. The street has no name. All the men are dead or missing. And is that the carcass of a motor carriage over there? No. I'm surprised that woman hasn't put me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Dark eyes survey the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull grey metal rests in her scabbard. A sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. Fortunately for you, madame. The RCM is on the scene. All right. Politics time. Let's react. You're in danger of the working class, have no idea what's happening to them. Try not to be scared, this is just how the real city looks. Oh, I'm not frightened, officer. I'd never... She leans against the railing, looking up at the grey sky. Have I told you how they discovered this place? This fishing village or this island? No, the Insulindian Isola. Uh, I know you haven't told me how they found it. Well... Your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45% west of the river. 50 years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. 45% uh, is around where I operate. Things are getting better, though. Uh, oblivion, that's so me. Uh, say nothing. It's a pity. Most of these people will never know what this place means. This island of matter. Or why they were ferried over in the first place. Remind me to tell you one day. For now, how can I assist you in this new location? Uh, tell me you now we have time. Do we? Oh, he glances at his watch. It doesn't look like he does. I hear you have singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. I would not want to delay you. Oh, okay, well, so she feels like the ball's rolling as well. Maybe there is something else I can assist you with, while you're hot in pursuit. Uh, 
I've more, got more questions about reality. More lessons in basic reality? Dear Lord. My favorite part of the day. Go ahead, ask me anything. Ah, oh, conceptualization, esprit de corps. Ah, okay, um, esprit de corps, hang on. Glad to have been a Okay, what the hell? You're back. Good. What can I help you with? More lessons in basic reality? Six kilometers southwest in the Valley of Dogs, junior officer Chad Tilbrook takes aim at a rabid black dog licking its wounds in the grass. To his left, his partner, Emil Mullins, whispers, You heard what happened to Tequila Sunset in Martinez? Yes, he lost his mind, Tilbrook answers, fingers on the trigger. Don't worry, Emil. He pulls it out slowly. Slowly now. He'll find it again. We always do. What am I? You? You're an officer of the RCM. She says energetically, the Revachol Citizens Militia. Preciso Mundo. Good, and what is the Revachol Citizens Militia? Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revachol, detective. Yes, we are the Revachol Citizens Militia. Boom. Uh, it's getting dark. He's being sarcastic. You said de facto. Yes, that means not de jure. The RCM acts in what is poetically called the twilight of international law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. Uh, that's it for the who I am part then. Permit me to conclude with this. Who you are to me is the police, the only legitimate law enforcement authority in Revachol. And if those authorities drink so hard they need help recalling the basic terms of reality, well, I am here to help. Uh, let's get some of these conversation points out of the way. What are Berlin we? in Martinez, baby. Baby? A casual term of endearment popular among the 50-plus crowd. It's a disco holdover, pay it no heed. I'm a disco holdover myself. <laughs> Aren't we all? She refers to your corresponding ages. Mm, and what is Martinez? Martinez is a district of Revachol. A very small district tucked away near the industrial harbour. North of the 881 and Jamrock. You would be excused for not knowing about it. Unimportant, they say. Forgotten, even. Shelled to smithereens during the revolution. It has its charms, just not this time of year. Tell me more about Martinez. I'm not a good ambassador. I've only been here once before, as a teenager. Not a lot has changed. There are ruins, a terminal, fishing boats, reeds, boys with boxy shoulders. As I told you, Martinez used to be a province, a workers' resort before the city swallowed it and the artillery did its part. Now the reeds are the real star of the show here. The further down the coast, the wilder it gets. Uh, you mentioned a sea. What sea is this? It's not really a sea. It's the Bay of Revachol. And the bay feeds into the ocean. Are we near the ocean? Yes. We are on an island in an ocean. The world's largest body of water. The Insulindic. Known to the early River Sholians as Les Immensités Bleu. The Blue Immensities. And what's the name of the island? Caillou. As you already know. Imagine a pebble. A smoothed over pebble amidst a great blue sea. Misshapen, cracked. The cracks are the river Esperance. We're in the delta of this river on the sixth branch, the Martinez distributary. It is clear this pebble is of enormous value to her and to humanity at large. Tell me about another perhaps even more fundamental aspect of reality. I would be happy to. What okay. is a preposterously expensive education for if not sharing? Anyway, okay, uh I think I'm going to leave Without this for now. Of assistance. The um, I know. Are there no Anything other... Else? Let's talk more about this boat well, you're on. Technically speaking, I'm not on it right now. Nah. Good. Okay, I thought there was going to be an option potentially to go somewhere. Um, was it 9.22? Oh, we're so close! Let's have a wee chat with her again. The waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. 
Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. Why does she care about the waves so much? What is it with you and those waves? What is it with waves and fishermen? We need to be out there with them. Fishing, making a living. So I asked them to accommodate me. But until that happens, I can try to assist you the best I can. So, what will it be, officer? Uh, oh god, P Kim's presence makes it awkward. Suggestion, yeah, I'm not going to be able to get out on a date with her at any point, I think. Um, I'm looking for someone maybe you can help. Let's see. Who are you looking for? I'm looking for a suspect who might have stayed in this neighbourhood. Okay. When did this person stay here? Very recently, over the past few days. She might have arrived on Friday. Oh. I've been out on the sea for most of the past week. The Shoot. weather's been good for fishing, so I usually start at four in the morning. Really? Yes, that's the optimal time. Got to make the most of the calm. I've been sleeping like a corpse after. The sea really takes its toll. Now I'm just waiting for the wind to settle to get out there again. Sorry I couldn't help you out. Maybe I can help you find someone else. Uh, no, that's it. I'm not looking for anyone else right now. Well, how can I assist you then, officer? Uh... What the hell? No, I'm not looking for someone else, actually. Um, okay. Where is old Granny Bumpkin? The old woman still sits in her chair, continuing with her chores. As she does so, she quietly hums to herself. The buzz of electric lights blends together with the slow rumble of the ocean waves at night. There's a gap where the name of that song should be. You should ask her about it. Right you're still now. up? Oh, you're still up? Yes. I can't really sleep anymore. Only a few hours a night. It happens when you grow older. My suggestion is don't. Don't grow any older than you already are. That's old enough. What's troubling your mind? Uh, have you seen a red-haired woman named Ruby around the course? No, I haven't seen anyone lately. Somebody must have seen something. Because she's blind, which you seem to have forgotten. Okay, but do you know who I'm talking about? This is my little cinder block town. I know what goes on around here. Uh -huh. She's being evasive. She knows something. There was a murder in Martinez. She might be a suspect. We would appreciate your help. Would you now? I know how this world works. And it doesn't work when people tell on each other. Okay, you know something? We're here to help. This is like when the man locked himself in the woodshed. We just need to help her come out. This is... <laughs> what? This isn't about the union, you know. You don't have to worry about retaliation. Um, you know something? We're here to help. Aye. That you are, dog omen. Help yourselves and your organization. Help the storm clouds gather on the horizon. Uh, I see you know something, but you've decided not to tell us. There's not much to tell. People come and go. Now, was there something else? Oh, for goodness sake. I see, ma'am. I hope you don't mind if we look around anyway. You should look around your shack. Maybe she's rented it out to others, too. Oh. Well. What, my shack? Oh. It's getting cold. This late oh. in the night, time to call it a day. Uh. Okay, part of me... Part of me wanted to take him with me, but I am really tempted to try and get my gun back myself. Just because I don't think it's a good look from Kim's perspective, especially if I involve him in this. It was my fault, I pawned it, somebody's got it. I think I'm going to tell Kim goodnight. And I'm going to go and try and get it back myself. I am going to put the armor on when I do. Good night, officer. We'll meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll meet in the morning. And would you look at that? As you Floorboard? look at the floorboards in this corner of the shack, it's clear one of them isn't quite level with the others. The edge of a floorboard next to it looks scratched. Move the board aside. Hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust below. 
What's in here? Nothing particular catches your eye. Looks like more reeds. There might be something hidden inside the sand, though. Search through the sand and sawdust. You stick your hand in and start combing through the sand. Dry, not like outside. Fine dust. And then, something hard wrapped in paper. What is it? A small cylindrical object. You pull it out. A bullet. Oh, my word. A nine millimeter bullet, to be exact. Fit for all muzzle loaders of that caliber. The floorboard doesn't care. But maybe the washerwoman does. You have enough to confront her with. Okay. It's extra ammunition. She's locked and loaded. Ready to fight some cops. Back we go then. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Why was there a bullet under the floorboards of your shack? Damn that girl. <laughs> and without anger, a long and harsh life has taught her not to buckle under pressure. I'm guessing you didn't put it there, Ruby did. Gone and hid things in there? She's usually a good tenant, and not a stupid one either. You rented the room to her? Yes. I let my room to that Ruby girl. Bringing out a rag after a long silence, her hands move into the water bucket. Some water sloshes over the edge. As I've done before when she's been in trouble or just looking for solitude. I've made it clear. We welcome all kinds of people here. When was this? She came last Friday, left on Monday in a hurry. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? You said she left on Monday? Yes, early with the dogs. Around 8 o'clock, I think. Is the room exactly as she left it? I cleaned it, like I always do. Was there anything else there? No. Shoot, what is she like, Ruby? She's good company. Knows how to talk to an old woman. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation. So I really appreciate that about her. Did she talk to you much this time? No, she was mostly silent this time. Kept to herself. What do you mean? She tried not to let it show, but I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cross a few lines, but this time she mostly stayed in her room. Why do you think she left the bullet there? How would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. She looks back towards her shack thinking. Uh, where did she go? I don't know. Further up the coast. She tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on that door screeched like a cat in heat. Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots, heading up north. There's nothing else up north. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. You'll never find her, you know. She knows the coast like the back of her hand. You only just arrived. Unless there's something I've missed in terms of where she could be hiding. Further up the coast we go, then. Are you sure you'd rather stay here? Get a nice cozy fire going in the heater? Seems like a better idea to me. The fell electric mural. You feel like you should go look at it again. Step closer this time. On, on the wall of the building up the coast? Well, I guess I can do that. I've got 18 minutes before I, I hopefully get my gun back. I have a few more questions about what Ruby. What more do you want to know about that poor girl? Oh, no, okay, I'm done. Yes, let's hear those other questions. Uh, what was the song you're humming? A lullaby my mother used to sing. I sang it to my kids, too. It's an old Samaran children's song. And what's it called? Surrender to the Night. That's kind of grim for a children's song. Even if it is a lullaby. By the way, the reason I'm asking is because time doesn't move if I'm running around myself. I could go and sit on a bench, but we might as well get a few points out of it. Sounds nice. Yes, it does. Uh, goodbye, I'm One off. One thing, officer. If you do find her, please go easy on her. She's a good girl. Whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. No, she got a, uh, put a bullet through the back of somebody's skull, love. Okay, um, let's back out a wee minute. 
Ah, 15 minutes. I could go and have a quick look at the mural. What time? Hang on a wee minute. Confront the pigs and get your gun. Someone's been running around with your sidearm pretending to be a police officer. You must meet her near the old fish market at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock? 10 o'clock? What the hell am I talking about? And get your service weapon. Yeah, just walk past the fishing village until you see the boardwalk. Does she mean this sign? There is a ladder. You see a once bright mural towering above you. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now, only a shadow of peeled letters remains. It says, Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Step closer. Above the mural, a collapsed roof, broken windows set in walls that are cracking and will soon also fall, and the coastal breeze rustling and sighing in the remains of the edifice. Feld Electrical. How ironic. All these dark rooms. She's not in that building, is she? Feld Electrical. You only know them as a small company that makes ink cartridges. Looks like they used to be big. There's something in the wind. Sometimes the only way to go forward is to fail first. Could she be in there? You try to peer in, but there are no windows on this side. Only the disinterested whistle of the wind. Lieutenant Kitsuragi stands in front of a mirror, fixing his orange bomber jacket. You should be asking him that question. Ah. Uh, okay. So there's nothing I can do at this stage. 40 se- Oh no! <laughs> I need to speak to somebody. What the hell? What was that down there? Uh... You know what, I can always go and talk to somebody and give me a wee second, I'll take it over to 13 minutes. A better deal! Yeah! Medium car! Maybe your buddy can tell you what Arno Van Eyck's jam is missing to make it hardcore. Oh, okay, so what we've got, plus one, the aesthetic of an anodic music. What was that sound, expert on anodic music? Okay, so we're 50 even physical instruments. Sounds good. Hang on. Let's give that a whirl then. You know it in your lungs where the pressure should vibrate, in your heart that's alone, and in your solar plexus where the hits should land. So does every chordate animal. Needs more bass. What? The young man makes a sudden move like he's about to turn the volume down, but that would be ridiculous. And a melody, a good melody, is what makes the song really stick, so that you can't get it out of your head anymore. Point at your head. Wow, okay. We should stop with the melody, but where would we get that stuff from? Well, yeah, I don't know. I was thinking you would know. Nowhere. I'm not going to become some sort of anodic cop too. I've got enough cop copo tapes already. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about anodic music. I'm just the party boy. I get the people going and say it's hardcore. Okay, I'll look into it in an official capacity. It's up to the police to make the bastard, the beats go, the bastard, I don't know why I'm saying that, the beats go harder. Um, Alright, I'll see if I can come up with something on my own, a citizen's investigation. Take the task. The young man falls silent with appreciation. He even tries to contain his smile, as if it could hinder your investigation. Basically, what you need to find here is a tape with some banging music on it, so that Egghead could use it to remix Fan H Jam. Yeah, maybe that street talker across the pawn shop has got some tapes to sell. That's just an idea. That was exactly where my mind went first, pawn anyway, shop. Anyway, that's all yours to figure out, Copman. Copman! Whoa, that was a crazy sound we heard before. Yeah! It was awesome and scary. Very hardcore. Too hardcore, in fact. I couldn't control it at all. What happened? It sucks up all the air in the mix until it's the only thing left. Starts compressing itself and everything around it. 
completely fills up the headspace. Extreme! Inside your chest, the heart beats still with the after effects of the sound. Imagine if you could harness that power, making it pulse. Tempting, is there anything we can do about it? Oh! I don't know! Maybe someone can do something with this. I imagine this is the sound that the future could make. Sounds like a horrible future. Sounds like the future could be even more hardcore than I ever imagined. Yeah! <laughs> hey, I have a tape with me. Maybe you can use it to improve a night's jam. Tape! Yeah! Spin the tape until the space escape! Yeah! Oh, cool. Okay, give him the door gunner Mega Mix. Smallest church in St. Sands. No, uh, door gunner. Hey! He snatches the tape from your hand and at attaches it to the empty reel slot. One hand on his headphones, he listens to the audio, then shaking his head, he no! says... No! No, no! This is gonna make people scared! Keep it oh. positive! Keep the love in the house! Maybe if I go and get more tapes from the pawn shop, I can sing karaoke in the bar as well. Uh, what about this one? Righteous! Shakes his no! head. No! No! Can't do! This is gonna make people sad! This isn't sad, car. Okay, never mind. Normal, stable, normal, stable. How do you like it in the church? Yeah! Back on the case, no disgrace. Bring it down to party place. The first page of the second chapter. Could it be? Maybe for him. You only have a chapter or two left in you. Last of the penultimate, more like. All right, goodbye, Egghead. Oh, goodness me. Okay, four minutes. Yes. What is it? Have you seen anyone suspicious? Say, a woman named Ruby? What? No. No one's suspicious around here. Yeah, everybody in this church is looking suspicious, by my reckoning. She has not seen her, sire. It is true. Pale, unknown. Minus ten, dear lord. Uh, heard of Doom Commercial Area, investigate Doom Commercial Area. What was it ten, the Pale? Pale Unknown. Is that not a thought process? Nah, I'm making that up. Okay, uh, hey, about the two millimeter hole again. The swallow, you mean? What about it? Okay, I've got nothing to say to her then. Great, thanks. Two minutes! Oh my god! I'm literally just killing time now. She's whistling a melody, her trusty contact mic attached to a wooden pulpit. At the sound of your footsteps, she stops what she was doing and turns to you. Why does that trill sound familiar? Hey there. I've been recording some new audio from all these beams and rafters. The sounds travelling through the wood are pretty cool. Creaks and stuff. Like you're underwater, you know? But like, underwater inside a tree. And no, it's got nothing to do with contact mic. Uh, I wasn't going to. No, no. I actually wanted to thank you. For getting me and my friends in here. And we even found some new... Associates. Such as they are. Uh, how's everything going? Good, I think. Noid is getting a read on the place. I think he finds the carpentry very impressive. Andre's been setting up the compressor and dancing. Egghead's been keeping the party up. He's got the stage under control. Sauna, the programmer, she's doing whatever she does behind that radio computer of hers. She doesn't talk to us much, and the crab man hasn't shown himself, thank God. No, can you tell me about your associates? Sure. You helped us out. I can repay the favour. What do you want to know? Tell me about Sauna. Actually, you know what? Thank you for some other questions. Sure. We know we can come back to it. Uh, I'll ask her about Ruby in a wee minute, but I'm going to do one of two things, first of all, which is put the curious on. So keep that on underneath my jacket. Uh, let's just tart ourselves up a wee bit because we want to look professional. Okay, let's go and do this thing. Oh God, I'm actually quite nervous. Put your hands where I can see them. 
What the fuck is this? As the aging woman under a mountain of police paraphernalia mumbles to herself and notices you and reaches for the megaphone. Show me your hands. This is the pigs. Show me your hands. Right now! Scavenged, battery-powered police lights protrude from her back. The flickering light show reveals a gun in her shaking hand. Her hand is trembling from some sort of neurodegenerative disease. Oh my word, easy ma'am, take it easy. Failure to comply. Suspect is displaying aggression. Officer, under duress! Officer, under duress! Her eyes bulge with terror. Veins protrude on her forehead. I am the police. Don't move. Don't move. Hands on your head. Suspect is armed and dangerous. I'm not moving. Suspect is on the loose. Suspect at large. Officer, administer street justice at our own peril. That one extra lick with a baton or extra knee strike above was what was actually required. Suspect is under control. Suspect is under control. The situation looks bad. Calm yourself. Steady your breathing. This is dangerous. You're 70% certain you always leave your gun loaded. Shit. Please identify yourself, ma'am. You're not the police. I am the police. <laughs> Hand to eye coordination. 83, this is the pigs. Let's do it. Alright, here's how we do it. As soon as that gun isn't pointed at you again, you dash right. Then immediately close the distance. Left hand grabs the barrel. Right one breaks the wrist. No, that won't be necessary. Look closer. The gun, all three barrels, red and blue light shining through. It's not loaded. Oh, dear lord. Okay, my god, it's not loaded. The gun isn't loaded. Ma'am, the weapon you're holding is mine and I know it has no bullets. What? The woman looks at the weapon in disbelief, her eyes suddenly reddish with tears. She looks straight down the barrel and squeezes the trigger. Wait. This isn't police issue. Police weapons have bullets. This isn't real. What is this? Police guns always have bullets. What is this? Why did you sell me this? Oh, my word. Grab the gun right now. This might be your only chance. Oh, pick up your gun. I'm done with this gun. Leave it behind forever. Hell no. Pick no up the gun. ever cares anymore. Why would they cheat me like this? Are there, how many real did she pay for this damn thing? Like 400? Okay, you need to figure out what to do with her now. Nobody's ever around. Nobody ever comes to visit me. I'm very sorry this is how life turned out for you. Gently touch her shoulder. Yeah, let's be sympathetic as we can. Her scratched skin is warm to the touch. But the person inside doesn't even know you're there. All right, what am I going to do with you? The catatonic woman, especially now that she's unarmed, doesn't seem to be a threat to anyone but herself. Titus wants to be the sheriff. I'll tell him where to find you. Maybe he knows your family. At ease, patrol officer pigs. Your heart is in the right place. Bow. At ease, patrol officer. The catatonic woman doesn't understand, probably even hear, your kind words. She just is. Oh dear, Titus wants to be the sheriff, I'll let him know where to find you. Please, leave the radio on. Mr. Moran is on Channel 8. Reflex to what? Being left alone? She stands motionless. Just a heap of clothes and flashes now. Maybe if you search her once more? Oh! Fairweather. P500. Please be good. Remember that weakness you were looking for in the ceramic armor? Like, maybe it can only stop small, fast projectiles, but a large, slow-moving pry bar would shatter it? Or, if I run an electrical current through it, maybe it will melt. Or, personal favorite, frequency something something radio weapon? None of that would work. You need to shoot the part of the enemy that doesn't have fear with a T-500 on it. Because the armor itself is invulnerable. Good news is, so are the armor pieces on you. 
Oh, okay. Bonuses. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. Plus two hand-to-eye -hand coordination against enemies. I oh, I see. In against enemies in FT500 armor. Oh, shit. Are we going to have to fight people in FT500 armor? I mean, I don't know how this series is going to play out, but maybe, maybe that's beneficial for the future. Sounds like... If something like that were going to happen, okay, uh, we can always have a think about what we want to add in next, because I've got four skill points, but anyway, let's go back and search the lassie one last time. The woman stands slumped. She looks catatonic under her mountain of RCM paraphernalia. Is one of those things a police cap? Pick up the RCM cap. She doesn't even flinch as you reach out and disentangle the familiar-looking lieutenant's cap from her mountain of RCM paraphernalia. Shake her shoulder? The old woman doesn't react to your touch. Okay, leave her be. Uh... Ooh, RCM... Is that my cap? Did I have a cap originally? I get a funny feeling that I might well have done. Okay, uh... Crikey! Hardy and the pigs. I, I I have my gun back. This is fantastic news. I need to come back with Kim because we need to potentially figure out if Ruby's in that building. That sounds like where that's going. Uh, and there's a few other things that we could potentially do. What have I got? I've got a few minutes left. You know what? Let's just very quickly go and speak to Titus if he's still there and let him know about the lassie. Because um, I feel sorry for her. Clearly she's batshit crazy. I can't imagine. Where the hell did she get all that real to buy my gun? Oh well. The Copper NATO is back. What do you want? There's an old catatonic lady in the old fish market on the other side of the bay. She needs help. <laughs> What's that, Copper? You want us to help little old ladies now? If you want to be the local law enforcement, these kind of things fall on your shoulders. Yeah, yeah. We'll send someone out. Who is? Wait. It's the pigs, isn't it? Yep, her. God, poor lady. Don't worry, we'll handle this. I think she got some family in Kuron or something. Bastards left her alone when she got sick. We've been getting complaints. Hey, wasn't Everard's B team looking for her the other day? They said something about her, I don't know, finding something? Yeah, I think you're right, Jean. She have something of yours, pig. Nope, she didn't have anything of no. mine. Well, whatever then, copper. No. They totally said what it was. What was it? Anyone mm. remember? Oh, God. I don't remember. I was fucking drunk. Let me know if you figure it out back there. Now, anything else we can help you with? What's her name, her real name? Auntie LaPlante. We always called her. Something LaPlante. Marianne, amigo. Marianne LaPlante. Anything else you wanted to know? Who was she? Walls. Like before. Just an old lady. Her kids moved away years ago. Never come to visit. Never took her calls. She gets out every now and then. She did ride by lots of us when we were kids. Always was a little off. But still. Us kids? That must have been ages ago. How did she get she like this? Get wanted to be a cop, you mean? Well, she... Shit. I don't actually know. Anyone know why she started acting like a pig? No fucking clue. It's gotta be the crazy. Who'd want to be a pig? Someone who wants to set the world rights before its end. Ever think of that? Uh, more like who wouldn't? Cool uniforms, fast machines... Packing heat, sign me up. Law enforcement is a respectable occupation, sir. Respectable professions don't shoot kids, Cerdo. They don't beat confessions out of prisoners. Unbelievably boring fucks say seven incredibly boring things is the achievement I just got. Well, okay, I think we've summed up what my playthrough's like here, but... Easy there, Al. Sit down. We got one of our own to take care of. So let's not get worked up. Wow, okay, that's hurt my feelings, but then again, I'm doing this to myself because this is my playthrough. 
Anyway, um, that's another thought as well. I'd love to come back to this at some point. Clearly, this is this is going to take an, an extraordinary amount of time to complete this playthrough, but I would love to go back through it and not worry about the choices that I'm making from my perspective and just see how far I can actually push this thing, because it seems like this game would be completely insane if you just went all hell to the leather. Uh, where did she get all the cop gear? I know. She lives by the water. Shit washes up all the time on the beach. Station 41. A man carries a crate of rusted, unused badges. You think these would net us something at the annual auction? A balding detective drags a comb, futilely across his head. Shit, who'd want those? Just dump them into the river. Thanks for helping out with this one, Titus. No problem, old cop man. We take care of our mentally ill here in Martinez. Ain't that right, boys? Sure enough, we're the real heroes on these streets. Okay, okay, done and dusted. Well, I have my gun back, uh, and I'm going to call it quits for this episode because that is a hell of a lot of progress. Um, we can go back to the shack, get some sleep. I guess there's a couple of wee things I can try, including seeing if I can get out on a date with the lassie in the fishing village. But apart from that, uh, yeah, I guess the next thing is to meet up with Kim after we go to sleep um, and then see if we can locate Ruby. So things are rolling, and I think there's less and less people that I really need to speak to in terms of ticking boxes, but uh, it's it's fantastic. And, oh, actually, wait a minute. Okay, all right, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Oh my word, a three shot revolver barrel. Three shot revolver? Jesus Christ. A sale pepper box typically assigned to officers of the RCM upon reaching the rank of sergeant. The butt of the gun is worn and the engraving on the side reads Sunrise Parabellum. This is your gun, no doubts about it. Holding the gun feels natural and satisfying. It's like an extension of your arm, the polished wooden handle almost fusing into your palm. I think my hand recognizes it. It reminds you of the day you first held it, with fear and respect, hoping you don't have to use it in vain. The sun was out in Jamrock. It was so long ago. Sheathe your sidearm, officer. A serious law official cop by the book should know to only unholster their service weapon when using it is unavoidable yep fair comment Okay, done and dusted. Anyway, you know what? I'm going to leave this episode now. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, please hit that like and subscribe button. But this is Big Bear signing off. But there will be another video. See ya.